Hello, everyone. I'm going to give everybody just a minute to get everybody in space if you'll let me know when folks are in from the. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Vice Chair Kale. I am going to chair this meeting this evening. Uh, chair Newt is out. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this uh, meeting to order. So I'm going to call to order the Livingston City Commission um, on this day, August 9th um, at 5.34 p.m. Uh, can I have roll call, please? Uh, Chair Kale. Here. Commissioner Friedman. Present. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Lyons. Here. Thank you. Uh, we'll move right on to public comments. I'm going to remind folks that individuals are reminded that public comment should be limited to items on which the city commission has supervision, control, jurisdiction, or advisory power. These comments should be on things that are not on the agenda this evening. Everything else that's listed on the agenda, you will have the ability to comment on when we get to that agenda item. Uh, do we have any general public comment tonight for things not on the agenda? Uh, if so, raise your hands, put your name in the chat um, or come off mute. Patricia Grabo, I see your hand up. Uh, feel free to come off mute and make your comment, please full name and address for the record. Uh, Patricia Grabo, 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston. Um, this last uh, few weeks, I had the opportunity to find to take a look at the uh, City Commission handbook um, and uh, was chagrined to find two things in that handbook that I didn't know were in any kind of packet. One was there were a number of city manager powers that simply the city manager does not have that is in the city commission packet, but the other is what is called rules of conduct. Now the rules of conduct came about when uh, rules of conduct were created by Ed Meese, the former city manager, and in the, under the rules of conduct, uh, there were things, um, actually I was voting against the 32 million dollar Yellowstone Preserve, which gratefully now is a conservation easement. But um, the city manager was pretty angry at me for voting against the Yellowstone Preserve. So he created what is, he and Bruce Becker created what was called the Rules of Conduct. And under those Rules of Conduct, uh, I got a hold of the American Civil Liberties Union. Now the American Civil Liberties Union never almost never uh, advocates for cities, but in this case they did. They came to Livingston and they said, and I have an email from the American Civil Liberties Union saying that the rules of conduct that were created in the city of Livingston were unconstitutional. That's the word that the attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union said uh, about the rules of conduct. So I'm, I'm concerned that it is a, a means of intimidating the, the city commissioners. I'm concerned that it is something that is unconstitutional sits in the handbook for our city commission. And I'd like to just point that out to this commission and to this body. Um, it is a very serious uh, matter that these exist within our city commission um, handbook. And I will forward on the email from the attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union in which she said that the rules of conduct that are there are unconstitutional. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia, for your comments. Uh, any other general public comment for items not on the agenda? Jane, I see you raising your hand. Do you want to come off mute? Uh, give us your full name and address, please. Jane, you're still on mute. Uh, okay, how about that? Now we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. This is a perfect example of what I'm going to talk about. Jane Jarrett, 315 East Lewis, 
Two weeks ago in general comments, I addressed the commission about returning to a public forum for your meetings. Just like right now, there are a lot of people in this town that don't have computers, that don't have access to internet, that don't have a lot of stuff that you just take for granted. I think you should go back to a public forum agenda. And I did it two weeks ago, and I've never heard anything about it. That's it. All right, thank you, Jane. Any other further public comment this evening? General public comment for things not on the agenda. I don't see any additional folks wanting to comment. Uh, Faith, do you see anyone? No, I do not. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close general public comment uh, this evening. And Jane, I will let you know that we did have a discussion about uh, returning to in-person meetings um, at the end of our last meeting. And we are looking into how we can make that work. We unfortunately at this point do need to find a place to be able to do that so that we can have space for everyone who wants to attend to be able to attend. Um, so we are looking into that. All right, I'm gonna move us down our agenda uh, to consent items. We have consent items A, B, C, and D. Uh, commissioners, do I have a motion or do we need to pull any of those items? I make a motion to approve consent items A, B, C, and D. Second. I have a motion by Friedman, or excuse me, a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Uh, any discussion? All right, uh, roll call, please. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right, we are moving on to scheduled public comments and I'm looking, Mrs. Lowey, to see if Greg has been able to join us yet. It doesn't look like he's on yet. Um, so maybe we'll move into the two ordinances and come back if that works yep. for the commission. I think that that will, that will work. So let's do our public hearing um, and we'll come back to that scheduled public comment. Uh, so we are gonna move into ordinances with public hearings. So these are public hearings and um, these go a little differently in order, so I'm going to try my best to remember how to do this. I'm sorry I'm spacing a little bit this evening, but Ms. Lowey's going to help me on this. Um, and so let me read this first. Uh, public hearing, this is an ordinance number 3036, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, amending section 30-13 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled Official Zoning Map of the City of Livingston by rezoning property legally described as lots one through 16 of blocks 22 and lots 17 through 32 of blocks 23. Uh, place addition address as 1200 West Montana Street from medium residential R2 to high residential R3. Ms. Lowy, can we get a brief description of this and then we'll go ahead and go to public comment. Sure, this is a property that we discussed in a prior commission meeting through a resolution of intent um, with the agreement to move it to R3 um, for medium density to high density. Um, and again, that calls for a public hearing in which um, we take comment from citizens about, um, about the, the project, any concerns that citizens may have about impacts in the neighborhood and so on. So, um, and I see Mr. Call is here as well, and this is his project. So we have quite a few letters of support that have come in that have been entered in as part of the record as well. So um, with that, I will turn it over to 
you, Chair Kale, to coordinate the public hearing. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Lowey. Mrs. Lowey, so we will go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing on Ordinance 3036. So we'll give the, the public the opportunity to uh, make a comment um, on this, and then we'll move on to Commission uh, deliver, discussion and deliberation. Uh, so I'm opening this public hearing on Ordinance Number 3036. Do we have any public comments? Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, come off mute. Put your name in the chat. Patricia Grabo, I see your name up uh, or your hand up. Please go ahead and come off mute. Uh, full name and address, please. Um, Patricia Grabo, 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston, Montana. I uh, <clears throat> I did hear some objection of the neighbors to this uh, project, but I want to say, as I said before, when it came up, that I've never seen the calls do anything that um, isn't really a, a benefit to this town in terms of construction. And, and very often something that I wish would be done, for example, <clears throat> the apartments above home outfitters and along comes the calls and they make that a beautiful apartment complex when it was, it was empty before. I, I don't have an objection to what he's doing. In fact, I wish that this town would take note of the fact that this is being located where the growth policy says we should be locating things. It's located within the idea of smart growth. It is located within the growth policy um, uh, guidelines. And it, it is not out at exit 333, which I believe is creating a a competitive commercial zone to our downtown, which eventually I think will kill our downtown. This is in this is infield development. This will be very done, well done by the calls. I've seen them do it before, time and time again. And um, a lot of us are just really quite happy that this is the kind of development that we certainly would love to see in Livingston. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, any other public comments on Ordinance 3036? I am not seeing any other hands uh, come up. Uh, if if I'm missing you, come off mute and let me know you want to make a comment. All right. Seeing no other public comments. Um, and let's go ahead. I'm going to close this public hearing for Ordinance 3036. Um, and now we will go to Commissioners, uh, commissioners, do you have any clarifying questions at this point? Okay, we, I know we've asked questions on this before. We've seen this before. Um, seeing no clarifying questions or asking for no cl clarifying questions, can I have a motion? Is there a motion on the floor? I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 3036. I'll second. I have a motion by Lyons and a second by Schwartz. Uh, commissioners, discussion. Commissioner Lyons. Uh, we, we did speak about this uh, at length before, but um, this is a good example of of potential. So again, I, I do wanna reiterate a point I make pretty often, which is when we're talking about zone, zoning ordinances, we're not talking about specific developments, but rather what allowable uses are um, in those areas. Uh, and I think that allowing for higher density in this area, which is uh, bordered by higher density and is within the, um, the, foot, the existing footprint of, of our community, 
um, has 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 good potential for infill development um, and at being being located where it is, well, it will have limited uh, negative impacts on its the surrounding community. And so this we while sometimes uh, allowing for change um, is is difficult. This is a this is a pretty good example of of um, a place that that could handle additional density. And so it as as Mrs. Graybaugh said, it, it is um, in line with the vision of of the growth policy. Also in line with the future land use map on the growth policy. And so this is a this is a good place for us to uh, allow for a higher intensity of of residential development. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Lyon. Other commissioners? Um, I'd just like to say, um, that, yeah, thank you, Tori, for uh, you know re-explaining that for you know new people that might be in on this meeting. So, um, yeah, it definitely fits with the growth policy and stuff like that with infill and. Uh, and something we desperately need. And thank you, Mr. Call, for heading that effort up. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Freeman. Or excuse me, Commissioner Schwartz. Apologize, button. I will just add that I agree with my fellow commissioners. Um, this is desperately needed within our community. Um, and this is the right place to add some additional infill. Um, with and we've heard so much, so much um, around the growth policy and so many comments um, asking if that's the way that this, our city should grow in that way. Um, and so I'm excited to, to see this move forward. Uh, so thank you. Uh, any further discussion, commissioners? All right, can we have roll call, please? Um, Chair Kale? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? You're out of order. I'm out of order. <laughs> Commissioner Friedman? <laughs> no, it's up to you. No. Commissioner Schwartz says yes. Four. Four. <laughs> We're both four. Thank you. Commissioner Lyons? Four. All right. Motion unanimously passes. Uh, thank you. Well, let's move on. We're going to move on to the next public hearing. And then after that, we are going to circle back to a scheduled public comment. So just to keep folks on track of where we are um, on the agenda. Uh, so moving on to ordinance number 3037. This is an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, amending section 30.13 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled Zoning Map of the City of Livingston by zoning properly legally described as lot 16 and 17 of the Arkville subdivision in section 23, Township 2 South, range 9 East as mixed use. This is Lowey. Unmuting myself as usual. Um, this is a property again that we spoke about in a prior meeting in which we agreed to um, zone it mixed use and send it forward for a public hearing. The subject property is around Willow and Rogers, um, immediately off of Park Street and behind what most folks know as Matt's Meets. And we agreed that doing a mixed use would provide um, the most flexibility to be congruent with what um, what the desire was for both infill and uses in that area. So with that, I will turn it back to Chair Kale for the public hearing. Thank you, Mrs. Lowey. So I will be going to go ahead and open this public hearing for ordinance 3037. Uh, if you would like to make public comment, please raise your hand, come off mute or put your name in the chat. Patricia Grabo, I see your hand up. Go ahead, come off mute. Full name and address, please. Uh, 
Can we go on? Patricia Grabo, 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston, downtown Livingston. I have been a business owner in downtown Livingston for 23 years. I have worked almost tirely, tirelessly to keep our downtown business community healthy economically and, uh, and to survive the Montana Department of Transportation um, system that simply destroys downtown areas in, living, in Montana. And I will take into consideration Great Falls. I will take into consideration Columbus, where um, major highways are um, attract businesses. And so what we have done on exit 333 is we have set up a competitive downtown to our downtown. And most people coming along I-90 think that that's Livingston. And what, what's happening um, will eventually kill our downtown, as far as I'm concerned. It violates our growth policy. It violates our infill development idea. It violates the concept of smart cities because cities are supposed to grow out from the commercial area. And, and that certainly doesn't do this. It, um, a commercial area is an economic area. It is an area where money is exchanged, things are purchased. And what has happened to Livingston in exit 333 is we we have Livingston downtown too. Uh, um, and Belgrade is also a very good example of where you lost the character of your town, you've lost the beauty of your downtown and you end up with this kind of commercial development close to the highway and eventually it turns into Belgrade. And I am just adamantly against the development that's taking place out at exit 333. When I was on the commission, for example, the housing behind um, uh, Albertsons was never supposed to be over two stories high. We, we are developing a population center. We are developing a commercial center and it will kill our downtown eventually. Only 5% only of the people who turn off on exit 333 will go to our downtown. Only 5%. They don't go to our downtown. We have a studies from Montana State University that says what they do is they either get gas and stay, and then they either go to Gardner or they continue down I-90. And our commercial area downtown never sees 1.9 million people that come along I-90 on their way uh, uh, from the east. I am adamantly against this. Uh, any kind of development right now at exit 333, it is, it is going to be the ruination of a beautiful downtown that some of us have fought 23 years to keep viable. Please, please reconsider what you're doing at exit 333. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Any other further comments uh, in this, during this public hearing? I am not seeing anyone. If I'm missing you, please come off mute and let me know. Not seeing any other further public comments. I am closing this public hearing on ordinance number 3037. Commissioners, clarifying questions? Commissioner Lyon. Uh, this is for whomever is qualified to answer the question. Um, but I'm looking at Mr. Woodhall. Uh, would could we get a, a reminder of the difference between highway commercial zoning and mixed use zoning? Uh, because I believe that highway commercial was um, what a lot of the properties around this property is zoned. So I'm curious if. If someone can give me a, a quick synopsis of the difference between those two designations. Madam Chair, 
if I may. Yes, Mr. Woodhall, go ahead. Thank you. The uh, main difference between the mixed use zone and the highway commercial zone is the variety of commercial uses. The mixed use zone allows specifically retail and uh, small scale, uh, what they call niche manufacturing like brewers and coffee roasters. Uh, it's an incredibly high density uh, residential zone, uh, the highest density that, that we have in our zoning district. Uh, highway commercial also allows rather high density residential. Uh, but the big difference is the highway commercial allows such uses as auto dealerships, hotels, drive-in restaurants, where the mixed use is more of a mixed use concept where they expect quite a bit of residential mixed in with convenience retail. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodall. That's a great, um, that, that's a great clarification. And um, as, as someone working uh, and seeing planning applications, uh, probably more intimately than anyone else here at the, um, in the meeting, I'm curious, have you been seeing more applications for residential development or commercial development come across your desk lately? I'd have to say the formal, the zoning and or subdivision applications that will go through a hearing process uh, is a mixed bag. Obviously, we dealt with a, a residential subdivision here a month ago or two months ago. Uh, right now, the one that's in the hopper is zoned highway commercial, and it's actually a, a 39 lot proposed subdivision. Uh, we're doing a lot of site plans for individual commercial developments. Uh, we have a new hotel being proposed actually very near this property on the other side of Park Street. Uh, and of course, we have the potential for Mr. Call's development coming up very soon. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Lyon. Uh, any more clarifying questions, Commissioner Schwartz or Friedman? I have no further questions. Mr. Lyons, thank you for, for that question. That was helpful, I think, for all of us to hear. Uh, with that, is there a motion on the floor? I make a motion to approve ordinance 3037. Second. I have a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Uh, we will now have discussion and deliberation. Uh, commissioners. Madam Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Schwartz. Oh. Um, yeah, thank you, Tori, for asking those questions that you did, Mr. Woodhull. Um, we did discuss this somewhat at length at the last meeting um, before it became a public hearing. Um, and uh, I think the mixed use suits that area very, very well. And uh, I'm happy to see it go this way. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Lyon? Yeah, uh, I'll just make a comment that I, um, I, I recognize Patricia's comment about uh, trying to avoid a separate commercial center uh, in Livingston. I think that's a valid point. Um, and I think that that's, um, I think that creating a separate commercial center would be contrary to the vision of the growth policy. Um, and I, I'd like to just point out that, that in my opinion, mixed, first of all, if we're speaking of the growth policy, mixed use what was what was designated in this area in the future land use map. So that went through the, the rigorous process of the growth policy. Um, I, one of the reasons I asked Mr. Woodhall that question is that my understanding is that um, the majority of the pressure, the development pressure in Livingston right now is for re residential development. Um, there is a, there's a booming market in the residential development market um, and developers are, are trying to capitalize on that. 
market and all, and in capitalizing on that market are are set are attempting to satisfy the needs and the the latent demand that exists in our community for housing. Um, if we were to zone this as high density residential, in my opinion, this would act that would actually have um, more of a negative impact on the entire community, both in terms of um, we could we could say in terms of safety, in terms of congestion, um, and in in turn uh, mostly those two things. Because if 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 that area were to only be developed re as residential, now again, what what we're 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 talking about allowable uses. We're not talking about what's going to go there because we don't as the commission actually dictate what goes there. We just dictate what is allowable um, to be developed there. Um, but if that were to be developed solely as, as a residential area, then you would have people needing to get onto Park Street and go downtown um, or getting onto the highway or getting to wherever their destinations are because they would need to travel from that origin to many, many different destinations throughout town. If, if this area were to develop as a mixed use, that would limit the, the, the impact of that traffic of the development on the rest of town because if there are um, retail developments or office or whatever is allowable within mixed use, some of the demand of that residential development would be satisfied within that development or that area itself. So mixed use allows for, um, for some of the daily needs of a specific area to be satisfied within that specific area. Now, not only does that have um, positive impacts on congestion and safety, it also has positive impacts on the environment because we're, there are fewer, few, basically lower vehicle miles traveled generated from a mixed use area than from um, something that's designated as a single, let's say residential use. Um, all, all of these reasons, um, and with, with Patricia's uh, valid comment in mind, I'm very much in support uh, of this area being designated as mixed use. And I think that it's a, a, a very good land use um, classification for, um, for areas that are relatively within the footprint of our existing city um, and have the potential for um, residential and mixed use um, development. So with that, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Lyon. Um, I will just say that I am excited to, to be able to use this new zoning uh, regulation that we have, which is mixed use. Um, I understand Patricia's comments and I don't want those uh, highway areas to continue to grow up with more hotels and drive through restaurants, which will keep people from going downtown. Um, and I think that this designation uh, will be helpful with that because those types of businesses will not be allowed within this area. Um, the exciting part about mixed use is the wide variety of housing options that are allowed within this zoning district. And in Livingston, we need housing all across the spectrum all up and down the rungs of the ladder um, in housing uh, from small studio apartments to family homes. And this allows any and all of that to happen in this area. Um, and we really need to have a variety of housing in our community that's coming available, not just one type. And this is gonna allow that to happen. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. And of course, as Commissioner Lyon said, we don't get to pick what's gonna, what's gonna go in what the development will be. And obviously we're just allowing that, any of that type of development to happen in this area. Um, but I'm hopeful to see some dense housing go into that, to that area and, and be really helpful for our community. Um, and that's all I have. Commissioners, any further discussion? Seeing none, let's have roll call please. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right, we are gonna backtrack 
in our agenda, we're going to go back to scheduled public comment. Um, and so we are going to have a uh, scheduled pub public comment from Greg Prothman and Ted Barkley, GMP consultants, hiring climate in our region for city managers. Uh, Greg, uh, I guess, Ms. Lowey, let's let you introduce um, and we will go from there. Thank you. Sure. Um, Greg is the consultant from GMP Consultants who is working with us to find our next permanent city manager. And we thought it would be good for him to give an update kind of of the hiring climate. Currently, some of, some of what other communities are having um, to contend with as they're doing searches. And um, Mr. Barkley is the former city manager of Belgrade who has been gracious enough to be helping us out with this process as well. So with that, I guess I'll turn it over to Greg and Ted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. And uh, <clears throat> Ted, I guess you can unmute yourself also and uh, chime in here as you see appropriate and uh, correct any of my misstatements, huh? uh, hopefully. Deal. Um, <clears throat> indeed, we're moving forward on the... Greg, you've frozen up. Makes I don't sense. know if you can hear us. So I'm oh. going to have you start again. You're back now. So go ahead and start again. Yep, frozen again. Or Greg, maybe turn off your video and just, just use your audio. Sometimes that's helpful as well. Uh, I'm frozen. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. That's frustrating. Sorry. I hope I have a good enough connection here to continue this conversation, but um, I, I'm in a red lion in Yakima. Sorry, at a conference, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> we have six applicants so far. Uh, we are out to add. We have all the ads placed. <clears throat> We've sent out about 7,800 letters of invitation um, to city managers, administrators, and cities of comparable size up and down all around the Western United States. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna get a good application pool. Um, Lisa, you did mention though that um, the, the climate and you, you gave a little bit of a, a, a precursor here, the hiring climate is very difficult right now. Um, the great resignation is indeed here and it's affecting city managers as well as every other industry. And we're finding there is, is, there's fewer numbers of city managers and an extraordinary number of jobs that are open around the nation right now. Doesn't mean we won't get good applicants, but we just won't get the, the numbers that we were used to say five and seven years ago. As an example, I was privileged to do uh, both Ted Barkley's uh, recruitment as well as Neil Caldwell's. Ted's um, application process, we got somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 applicants. Uh, we did Neil's work about 18 months ago now, maybe a little less, and we got about 30. What we're finding now in many of our recruitments, we're getting 10 to 15 applicants. It's, it's a little scary. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is, is we will get typically five to six pretty quality candidates. So <clears throat> that's, that's the recruitment um, environment we're seeing right now. Lisa, is there any questions at this stage? Should I uh, stop for a moment? No, I think we're good. Looks like Greg. Greg, if you can hear us, I think you've, you've uh, frozen up again, but we're good oh, if you have more, more to give us. And feel free to turn your, your video off, Greg, if you think okay, that might be that'll, that, that'll, um, Let me do that real quick. Okay, is that any better? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Excellent. Okay, I'm, it wasn't much to look at anyway, so we'll, we'll go with the verbal process here. <laughs> um, so, the, the less impediments that we can offer a city manager um, applicant, the better the chances are we can keep that person in the process and result in a good application pool, at least giving the commission, you know, four or five quality folks to choose from. Um, things that, that, that you might want to think about is um, residency within the city. Um, perhaps you might want to expand that to a area outside of the city, such as a school um, you know, school district or some number, you know, a county, something along that lines, in case that manager would like to own a, a, a small ranch with horses as an, as an example. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know that to be true yet, but, but those are all things to think about. Um, compensation packages typically will be, um, you know, we crafted this one 
strategically that if we find a rising star, there's enough money at the bottom of the, of the package to attract somebody of that caliber. And hopefully, you know, they'll stay for five to seven years as they grow in their career. If we happen to find uh, someone at the tip top of their career and, and really, um, you know, commanding a higher salary, you have enough in the range to afford somebody of that, of that caliber also, and everybody in between. So I'm very happy that you selected the range that you did. Things to think about are going to be, um, this person's going to be coming in as a, as a mid-career individual, starting at mid-career, earning rates for vacation and sick leave and things of that nature. Um, and then also to consider uh, deferred compensation, which is also becoming a standard in most city manager um, packages so far. Ted, what have I missed that you think would be useful to talk about here? I know I'm catching a little cold, but well, I, I, I think you've pretty well covered it. Uh, you know, if anybody is balking at the uh, compensation range, uh, one thing that uh, you need to know is that uh, Belgrade, which has a smaller budget and smaller workforce hired in the middle of that range that, uh, that you're considering now, and virtually all the department heads that have been hired in the last couple of three years are, uh, in, are into six figures uh, for a starting salary. It's, it's just the way the world is um, right now. I, I kind of retired at the wrong time as far as compensation goes. But. <laughs> and, uh, and, and indeed, um, along that very line, we in Belgrade, just, just a data point, we went out for an HR director and advertised at, I think, 92 of 115 to 120 and got three or four good applicants, none of whom uh, took the job. Um, we've just gone back out. Uh, the manager there has made the decision and working with, with his board to uh, revisit department director salaries and this particular advertisement is going to go out to 100 to 140. So just an indication even for a department director what we're seeing now in terms of salary competition it's it's just so profound I, I can't understate this enough that it's it's supply and demand that there's more cities chasing fewer managers so those cities have to put more money on the table to attract quality talent. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news here but it's, it's just what we're seeing so far. So really, Lisa, that's all I have in terms of a report. Is there anything else I can do or answer for anybody at this point? Commissioners, I, Greg, if you're okay, I know this is public comment, but I think it, commissioners, if you have any specific questions of Greg, I would say, let's go ahead and you can go ahead and ask those. Uh, I know we have some discussion items at the end of the agenda and I do not believe Greg is staying through the meeting. So if you have uh, specific questions, now would be the time to, yes, to ask them. Well, if nothing comes up, Chair, um, certainly you all have my cell phone number and my email, and I'm happy to respond. Well, you and I have talked a couple of times and uh, happy to respond whenever anybody has a question. So feel free to give me a shout. Great, Greg, I'm gonna, I am gonna ask you one question, if I could. Um, at what point do you feel like we we would need to sort of sweeten the pot for a lack of, of a better uh, term? Um, are we good to get started where we're at? Do we need to make that decision now or is that a decision we might make during negoci negotiations? You know, I, I think we have a decent range for the moment and, and I don't wanna put you in a position of having to overpay if we don't have to. Um, we're, we're approaching, you know, we'll be closing here. I don't have the closing date right in front of me, but um, uh, Ted, do you have the, the profile in front of you by chance? I don't have it in front okay. of me. We um, talked about May 12th or May 12th. We talked about August 12th. I don't know if that was the date we stuck with or not. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're a little later than that. Okay. But um, once we hit the closing date is my point. Let's do a review of the quality that we think we have. If at that point in time, we think we need to go back out and continue to source more candidates, that would be the time to, to revisit the, um, the, the salary range and see if we need to extend that in some fashion. Great, Ms. Lowey, I'm gonna, Mrs. Lowey, I'm gonna ask you this question. If, if that becomes the need that we need to look at that, uh, we obviously need to vote on that through a meeting process. How many vote? How many times does that need to come before us to, to move that through? Can we do that in one meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, let me just 
Let me ask one more time. Any other questions from the, the commissioners? Just want to make sure. <clears throat> Greg, Greg, go ahead. You were going to say something else. I just want to say I'm, I'm hoping for good news. And uh, the fact that we're getting some, some applicants already is, is encouraging. And <clears throat> I, I will give Lisa a periodic report here on the application status as we move forward. And hopefully you can pass that along to the commission. All right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank Ted. you. Thanks for the invitation to uh, join the meeting tonight. I appreciate it. And we'll be talking soon. Thank you both for your time and coming. I appreciate it. You bet. Take care. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move us down the agenda and we are moving to ordinance ordinances. This is ordinance 3038 an ordinance of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, amending chapter 11 of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled Fire Protection and Prevention, Removing Language Redundant with State Statute and Removing Language Regarding the Life Safety Code and Renumbering the Sections into a More Recognizable Order. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you, Chair Kill. This is, um, as you know, we have started a, a broad project to revise our entire city ordinance, ordinance block of ordinances. Um, we are fortunate enough to have uh, Chief Lindroth with us, um, who has helped out tremendously in this capacity with the fire codes and the life safety codes. So I will um, turn this over to the chief and let him share with more specifics and certainly more expertise than I have um, what he has done with these codes. There is both a, a clean version and a red line version in your packet. Thank you. Chief. Thank you, Lisa. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, City Commissioners. I'm not sure that I've had the opportunity to meet all of you, but I've been having the pleasure to serve as your interim fire chief since last April. And um, one of the things that I was tasked with was to take a look at your chapter 11 of your codes and see if there was any needs for some rewrites. Um, from my quick review and then delving into it, the original codes that you have in place were written in 1958. So the good thing is, is that I've been alive one year longer than that period of time. So, um, but then they've had some reviews over the years, but in reality, they were substantially out of date. What you have before you in your packet is both a redlined as well as a suggested final copy of the codes. And what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, Chair, is to just go over briefly what I have done and um, I be, remain available for any questions or comments after that. Wonderful. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you. Sure. So basically what we were looking at was the original code that was adopted for fire was the Uniform Fire Code. That is no longer in existence in the state of Montana. It has been replaced by the International Code Council family of codes, which includes the building code, plumbing codes, electrical codes, and including the fire code. So all of the state laws are based on that international code, including the international fire code. So the recommendation first off that I made was is that we delete all references to the uniform fire code and replace it with the international fire code. I did along with that is NFPA, National Fire Protection Association had what was called the life safety code. Back when we had the uniform fire code, it was not a complete code and NFPA Life Safety One was able to kind of fill in some of those gaps. At this point in time, NFPA Life Safety Code is no longer needed because all of that is covered again by the International Fire Code. So any references towards the NFPA Life Safety Code have also been struck. From there, we went through and kind of looked at any outdated codes that were specifically added by the city. So things like fire alarms, fire extinguishers, smoking in a movie theater, um, all of those types of things really were already covered by the International Fire Code 
or not needing to be covered. Outside water use during a fire. There is actually that in our chapter 11 and it mandated that if there was a fire in town that anybody using exterior irrigation of their yards turn off the water until the fire was dealt with. In speaking with our public works and Shannon, uh, he says that we have more than adequate water in our systems not to have to do that. So it was recommended that that particular item be struck. There was also some amendments to the, how the fire department operates, how the officers were hired, how they were paid, promoted, and so on like that. And those I chose to take out and just replace with state law. So MCA 733 part 41 dictates all of that and we do not have the authority to change that state law. So we substituted what was in our codes for what is currently in state law to have them be compatible. So basically with these changes, um, it made sense to look at reordering how everything is laid out. And the chapter 11 final one that I put before you is a recommended reordering as well as the rewording. It has not been put into that order with the new numbers as yet, but if we make it past this first step this evening, next reading I can bring back in the correct order for, for reasonable reading. Um, are there any questions? Commissioners, any questions for Chief? No, uh, I don't at this time. I, I thought it was pretty comprehensive and uh, well laid out. So, um, yeah, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Chief, I have just one question I noticed. My notes. There was a spot where it referenced the amount of a fee for an inspection, and it looked like we just said a fee and left that out. We don't need to mention the specific amount in there. So what that was done is, is that originally it was set up to where we charge $80 for inspection fee. When I spoke with finance and legal on that, that is actually not what our practice is. Our practice is, is to charge a business license and the business license fee covers the inspection fee. So that's why that was struck. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Attorney Llewellyn, did you need to jump in there? You also have it set up so that you can set those fees by resolution and that they are not in your ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Makes them a little more flexible and the imposition and change uh, a little quicker. Thank you. Any further clarifying questions? If we have no further clarifying questions, I'll ask for a motion. And then after the motion, we will do public comment. I'll make a motion to approve um, ordinance 3038. Second. I have a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Um, and now we will open this up to public comment. Um, if there is any public comment um, on this resolution, please raise your hand or come off mute and make your comment. Not seeing any hands up. Um, I'm going to ask one more time. Public comment. If you, if I've missed you, come off mute and let me know. All right. Seeing none, I will close public comment and move to commissioner discussion and deliberation. Commissioners, Madam Chair, I be Tori again. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Short. No, I just I just want to thank staff for uh, once again. Um, we've been trying to update our ordinances um, throughout the city, and this is uh, 
and definitely one that was sorely needed. And um, it's nice to see the effort that went into it. And it looks like it's a great product. Thank you. I Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Lyons. Thanks. I uh, just wanted to thank Chief Ron. Uh, it looks very thoughtful and I appreciate your um, covering it and answering Chair Kale's question and uh, you leave me confident in voting for it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. I'm just going to thank the chief uh, for this thorough review of these ordinances and uh, thank you for your explanation, um, making it easy for us to understand. So thank you so much for your time and work on this. Uh, thank you, Chair. Any other questions, discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right, we're moving on to resolutions. This is resolution number 5060, a resolution of the city, excuse me, of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, authorizing the city of Livingston to apply for the American Rescue Plan Act minimum allocation grant program and authorizing the commitment or requ of required matching funds and authorizing the interim city manager to sign any required contracts to commit or accept funds. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you, Chair Kale. This is a standard resolution. We've, we've seen them now quite a few times through both the ARPA process and various other grant processes uh, with the state using federal pass-through dollars. Um, this is the minimum allocation grant, um, so commonly referred to as bucket B. Um, this money is strictly designated for infrastructure projects specific to water and sewer. Um, in this application, we are seeking to get our entire allocation of funding, which is about 1.34 million, um, along with a match of approximately 336 to 400,000, depending on where we come in on certain aspects of the project um, to address um, I and I, which is some um, infiltration and cracks and breaks in our sewer pipes that lead directly to our wastewater treatment plant. So these are the old among the oldest pipes in town. Um, they are clay. They were already um, fractured, having leakages and seepage into it um, prior to the flood. So we know that they took a significant beating in addition to already being damaged through the high water and the unprecedented flooding we had in June. So in looking at where we can best allocate this funding, um, doing this project now allows for us to protect um, and correct and repair those pipes so that we gain the most efficiency possible going into our wastewater treatment plant, but also protect the area groundwater, the river, and all of the subsequent areas around that, some of which are still included as part of the Superfund site related to BNSF. So um, with that, this resolution just seeks to provide documentation of our funding commitment for the match, um, which will come primarily from our enterprise funds as well as impact fees, mm -hmm. um, because this is considered a capacity expanding project because it will gain efficiencies on the highest used and heaviest carrying lines that our system has. So I'd be happy to entertain any questions about the project um, or about the grant process. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Lowry. Did we lose Commissioner Schwartz? I don't see him. Oh, he's walking. He just walked past my office. He's walking back into the room now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, uh, commissioners, any clarifying questions for Mrs. Lowey? Okay. Commissioner Lyon. Um, I know that you just said this, but sometimes I can be dense just so that I'm, I'm sure we're on the same page. We're at, right now, we're not actually committing to any specific expenditure, but rather committing 
to expend a match if we were to receive a grant. Is that right? This, this is actually the minimum allocation grant. So this is automatically awarded to us. This is not a competitive process. So, so we are committing okay. that funding to the match now. Would, would you remind me what the, the portion of, of our match is compared to the, the grant? 25%. Okay, uh, thank you. And so, sorry, so it's 25% of how much? of 1.345 million. Okay. So like $300,000. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, 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 thank you, Commissioner Lyon. That was my reminder too. It looks like the match will not, will not exceed $400,000 is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So, okay. Well, great. Any other questions? Clarifying questions. All right, do I have a motion? And then we can open it up to public comment. Second. Oh, wait, oh, you yeah. wanna make a motion, 50, yeah. 60? Go ahead. I make a motion to approve resolution 50, 60. Second. All right, I have a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Uh, now we will open this up to public comment. Uh, comment on this ordinance. Uh, please, excuse me, this resolution 5060. Please raise your hand or come off mute um, and give your comment. I am not seeing anyone raise their hand. I'll give one more call. If I missed you, come off mute, please, and let me know. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Commissioners, discussion and deliberation. Any thoughts? I'll just say I'm excited to see us qualify for $1.345 million uh, for a sewer project that needs to be done. So I'm, thank you, Mrs. Lowey for writing this grant. Um, and I'm excited that we have the opportunity to receive these funds. Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, roll call please. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right. Moving on to resolution 5061, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, authorizing the city manager to sign an amendment to the uh, owner engineer agreement with AE2, yeah, AE2F for the extension of the contracted on-call and instrumental control services through July 28, 2024, as it pertains to Livingston Water Reclamation Facility and SCADA system. Just before we move on, do we need to make that interim city manager in that, resolu in that resolution, just so we're correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's, your, there's an edit from me, and <laughs> go ahead, Mrs. Lowry. Yes. So this is just an extension of our already existing contract with AE2S. They provide us with telemetry and um, some other monitoring services for the wastewater treatment plant. They've been instrumental both in the construction and ongoing management of that plant. And were, were just phenomenal with us during the floods um, when we were in a, in a high water mode for days on end. Um, and we're able to get us through that with um, minimal, minimal additional cost, minimal um, having to like restart the plant from scratch. We didn't have to do that. Um, so their expertise is one that, that we rely on and having been 
start to finish um, with us through the construction of this plant. Um, this is just a logical extension of that contract. They are also identified as um, spe regional specialists in wastewater treatment and are, um, you know, widely considered experts in the field. So it would obviously be our, our strongest recommendation that this uh, contract extension go through. I would happily entertain any questions. Thank you, Mrs. Lowey. Commissioners, clarifying questions. Um, Madam Chair. Commissioner Schwartz. Um, uh, we're, we're still lacking, um, um, uh, what's the lack of a better word? Uh, a forum and somebody to run this um, that's certified at this point, or do we have a new hire yet? May I? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. We um, we have hired someone in who um, was serving as an, an interim foreman. So one of my favorite words right now is interim. And um, he had been here about three weeks when the flood hit um, and just did an extraordinary job um, dealing with all of that um, for weeks <coughs> on end. So he has received a um, provision, they call it provisional, so a provisional 1C certification already from DEQ and is working towards taking the test to be officially certified, but he is considered certified at this point. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, this is just, um... Just to highlight, you know, we've we've gone through um, a few foremen at this point, and uh, um, it's nice to have the the company that uh, designed, helped design and build this uh, facility on the ball, and uh, they've done, like you said, a phenomenal job, and I'm very happy with them. But um, um, they know the system and know knows how it works, so. Um, I'm happy to um, extend this contract. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Any further clarifying questions or questions from Mrs. Lowey um, around this? All right, seeing no questions, further questions from the commission, uh, do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve um, uh, resolution 5061. Second. The motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Uh, we'll open this up to public comment. If you have public comment, please raise your hand. Come off mute. Uh, let me know if you'd like to make a comment. I'm not seeing public comment. Last chance to come off mute. All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close public comment and commissioner discussion deliberation. No thought. I'm glad to move forward with a company that seems like they've been doing a wonderful job for us. I obviously see prices went up a little bit, but not astronomically. So that's nice to see as well. Um, uh, so thank you, uh, Mrs. Lowey, and I'm sure Shannon had something to do with keeping this moving along too. So thank you to both. He certainly did. Um, any other discussion thoughts? All right, seeing none, roll call please. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right. That pushes us through all of our resolutions for this evening. Um, and we are on to action items. Um, so let's let's go ahead and uh, do action item A, and then perhaps we'll look to take a, a our break. Um, we're getting close there too. Uh, so action item A: discuss, approve, deny. Recommendations from the ARPA Bucket A Visioning Committee. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you. Um, the ARPA Visioning Committee was created by the Livingston City Commission to 
address and take um, applications and provide guidance for how we address spending in the bucket A money. There's a whole lot of ARPA buckets. So um, the bucket A amount is about 1.9 million total um, of which we have committed about 200,000 to date, um, both for an economic agent through MSU as well as um, some premium pay during COVID for um, most of the city staff. So this, this has been a very dynamic and fun group to work with. I've been able to sit in and just provide a little bit of guidance around which bucket's which and how much money is where and what's okay and what isn't. Um, and Madam Chair, if it would be um, okay with you, I'd like to invite Tim Stevens, our chair um, of the committee to speak further about um, the process we've gone through as well as the recommendations, the initial set of recommendations that is coming out of this group. Please do, Mr. Stevens. Hi, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk with you. And um, I first of all, want to thank Lisa for her great work. I, I, I haven't spent a lot of time with her, um, but have just learned the incredible value that the city and you all commissioners already know uh, that she brings to the table and the expertise and the advice that she brought to this committee to help us move along efficiently was just incredible. So thank you, Lisa, for all your work and input there. Um, I, I'm representing a, a group here that was appointed by the commission um, uh, per city resolution 5027, which includes myself, Karen Cooper, um, whom I served on the commission with 20 years ago. <laughs> and um, and uh, Mr. Warren Maybe, who is a recent uh, commissioner, as well as uh, Commissioner uh, Clinton Schwartz. So um, we really enjoyed working together and, and learning about this opportunity here. And, and um, of course, um, it's in the in the face of, of a national pandemic that uh, this money came to to be in front of the city, and um, and the city has asked us to sort of help help through sort through this, not only sort through recommendations for expenses that have been incurred, but also sort of ongoing needs, because there are still are ongoing needs associated with with COVID, both direct and impact and direct uh, impacts. And I can speak to this personally. Um, my wife and I lost the business um, because of COVID, so um, I know this firsthand. So, um, anyways. The, the, we really tried to follow the, the, the tasks that, that the commission appointed to us um, uh, via the resolution. And I'm not gonna go through it, I'm just assuming that, that you're gonna read it, but uh, we made recommendations um, in terms of a narrower set of buckets um, that um, for disbursements of the, of the remaining funds. And um, the, the, four, the four categories that the, the Department of Treasury outlined were uh, some narrow, some quite broad, but we, we sort of narrowed it down to, um, to two recommendations, um, uh, not inclusive of, of the money that was already out the door for things like lost, lost revenue, which as, as uh, uh, Lisa pointed out, the already $200,000 of commitments already out the door for that. But um, we, are, we were recommending the two areas that, that the city commission focus in on. And one is um, the water and sewer needs that were identified in the city, which are um, uh, specifically flagged. I don't know, Lisa, what sup this is supplement A um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the commission packet. Um, we're recommending that the, the city consider um, funding those, those costs as well as um, the balance of the funds would go to uh, helping to support the nonprofit community um, in their uh, previous and their, to help recoup already expended costs as well as ongoing costs and and um, a couple of, a couple of notes here and, and one is um, while everybody including us directly um, had losses uh, during COVID the the nonprofit community is the one that that sprang forth to help fill the gaps to help fill the needs to help feed people to help house people to help counsel people um, to help uh, this community continue to function um, those costs were not just did not just magically appear some nonprofits went into debt some nonprofits had to uh, you know cut pay cut staff or uh, bend over backwards to make things happen and, and cut other programs and so um, our recommendation is based on um, the the hope that what we are what we are suggesting here will provide the maximum impact for the maximum number of people 
And, um, and if you look at, at, uh, at what the nonprofit community has done here, we have a strong, amazingly strong nonprofit community in, the, in, in this town. Um, and so the, the, the way we suggest you, you split those funds up is right now you have um, five formal requests in that, that came in before the formation of this, of this committee. Um, from from nonprofit organizations in town for ARPA funding, we're recommending that you that you um, uh, tonight approve um, the full amount of the request for four of those. Um, the fifth one, which is which is the depot, the only reason we're not recommending it is not because it's not a fit; it's because they didn't have the information in there that we could help. We can make a decision and a recommendation on, um, but they would be taken care of in 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 the next step, which would be we're recommending a round two that the city issue a request for proposals from the nonprofit community um, in Livingston um, and and invite uh, proposals from the nonprofit community. For uh, for ARPA funding, based on the the guidelines that that um, have been given to us about where this funding can go, and it's a pretty nice slick list of of, uh, of where this funding can and can't go. And this is kind of modeled after what the county did. The county had a pretty nice nice um, efficient process, and we're so we're sort of copying them because it was a good process and it was quick and easy. Um, and uh, and then and then um, one of the other things that we we put in our in our uh, recommendation is, and I've kind of since gotten an, gotten an answer to that, which, which is um, any remaining funds, uh, see how, if, if they might be able to be, any remaining funds after that second round of, of funding, if there are any left over, see if uh, what the flex is to be able to apply those to flood related um, costs. And, and I think according to Lisa, that question has already been answered. So um, that, that information we found out after, after we, we um, filed this this report for the for the commission, um, and and the other thing I want to say is when when we're defining nonprofit, we're defining a five hundred one c three as well as well as a five hundred one c six. And Lisa, if I'm not incorrect, that also includes um, opportunity to look at requests from the city. Um, it does. Okay. All right. And um, and and as as you all know, there's a wide range of impacts, whether it's whether it's Increase use of our trails and our parks that 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 are that um, need need increased maintenance or expansion, et cetera, across the board. So um, we're we're suggesting um, action tonight on on the four proposals that that you have in front of you and that you've had for a while that total one hundred sixty seven thousand dollars. And then we're also um, recommending that the city issue a request for proposals to the nonprofit community and we can help you get that word out um, and provide a 30 day uh, response opportunity that the city would entertain uh, requests from the community. And, and while, um, while the, uh, this, this committee's um, charter, I guess, is terminated with with the filing of this report. We did want to extend and and offer to you if if you saw future use in us assisting you um, thinking through this as thought partners in the future, we would be happy to do that. But but right now we're um, we're kind of done. So um, but per the per the resolution, but we're happy to work with you in the future. The other thing I do want to flag is that um, is that Lisa did help us work up a an application form for. Um, that that we might send out that's pretty straightforward you know i work for a foundation this one's nice it gives you the information that you need but doesn't ask people to put you know 30 hours of their work we can put in a proposal together so i think it's nice and slick and efficient and i'm sure that lisa would be happy to share that with you if um if that's of interest so anyways um i i think i've hit all the high high notes and the other thing i'll say is um I, I know a little bit about each of those four proposals that you consider, um, but I also have colleagues from the nonprofit community here um, joining us who I think can pretty much answer any other question um, that you might have in specifics. And then the other thing I'll say is, I, I'm, you know, as a funder in this community, I've been a funder for eight years. Each each one of these uh, four that that we're putting before you are are grantees of the Candida Fund. And so I can give you our own endorsement that they're they're solid and they're great organizations. So anyways, um, happy to give you any, answer any questions that you might have, but that's kind of what we got for you. So thanks for your consideration. Thank you, Tim. Um, commissioners, clarifying question. Um, I know I have some, but I'm gonna wait for everyone else. Commissioner Lyons. Are we, 
Are we voting on, so if we, if we approve the recommendations from the, from the committee that, that goes, that's kind of like two stage of, of approving their report and then also extending these grants to the four grantees that are, that are mentioned in the report, report is that correct? It, it is. This, um, this would effectively set aside those funds for um, the, the entities mentioned um, and, and also set aside the funds for um, the city to go ahead with the projects that, that we have requested on the sewer side. Okay, uh, that's all I had. Thank you. Other commissioners questions? All right, I'll go. I have a few, so <laughs> go ahead. Uh, so one to follow up, uh, Mrs. Lowey from Tory or Commissioner Lyons question. We will need a, to make a motion that specifically sort of hits on all these things and then and then put it to a vote, correct? So we'll need to pr be pretty specific in our in our motion this evening. Or or I believe you could do a motion to just approve all recommendations listed in in the report i'm getting the okay from courtney so um you know you could do that as well or if there were one in particular you wanted more information about um we could pull that much like you pull a consent item um and and move forward with it that way um i would like to say i got um an email from Lori bishop it's actually a voicemail that went to email she's not able to be here this evening um, she has another commitment. So if there are questions specific to Live Well 49, um, I'm certainly more than able to, to speak to those, but do not think that them not being here um, is in any way a reflection um, of them not being very, very uh, grateful for your consideration for this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here are a couple of my questions. I'm not clear. So we, we asked to sort of have this money broken up into buckets. And so really, as, if we move forward this evening, are we are we left with one bucket that then people will apply for? So we're not, we're gonna put $400,000 aside for the sewer projects. Um, and I'm thinking particularly for the grants that we just discussed. Um, and then what the remaining funds would then be one bucket for nonprofits and the city to apply for for funds. Is That's, that, correct? that is correct. As long as it met the other requirements of, you know, being a result of COVID, serving needs in the community or infrastructure. So um, that's that's the criteria. After this, um, in, in the addendums, there was a, a spreadsheet um, that I provided just to kind of go over what would be left. I believe it's like uh, 1.13 million left or, or close to that. Um, if if you choose to allocate everything that's in this recommendation. Okay, thank you. And then my other, I, I'm a little concerned because I, I feel like we never sort of officially had a round one. Um, and I don't know that we ever actually opened up that official line of we're opening up round one for folks to to apply for the for this funding. Um, and I'm concerned potentially that we missed a few folks that maybe had wanted to apply in that round one and didn't. Um, and so did we actually officially have a round one of funding or a round one of, of opening the application? These, um, these were individuals that applied as part of the application process for the county. The county went through their application process much quicker. Um, we chose to do this visioning committee and, and move forward in, in that direction. The visioning committee's thought was that these folks have provided a sufficient amount of documentation to understand what they, what they were looking for. It met the needs under the criteria both um, that we were working under as a city as well as the Treasury Department, which guides the overall rules for how this money is used. Um, so they wanted to, um, the visioning committee decided to move forward and make a recommendation to approve these ones where we had sufficient information, knowing that we still had a significant amount of money available um, 
for a round two, if you will, or a round one A, if you will. And I would and welcome Tim to, to jump in. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, just to clarify. So, so we, um, th there were five requests in, and we deemed that four of them had the adequate level of information in them um, so that we could confidently make a recommendation on the fact that it was a fit for this money and the fact that um, these were qualifying organizations, et cetera. And, and, and then also with the with the next round, maybe you want to call it the first round, I don't know, but with the, with the next round, with the issuance of an RFP, then any organizations who believe that they may be a fit, they haven't missed the boat. Um, they, they will be able to um, put forth proposal for the city to consider um, here within a 30 day time period. So um, nobody's going to miss out. And, and what we're doing is we're, we're recommending that the, the ones who uh, put forth enough information, like nothing less than or more than um, what we uh, would be requesting in the form that uh, that Lisa helped us put together. Um, uh, we're, so it's sort of a little bit of a two step, but nobody's going to miss, miss at least an opportunity to get get a request before the city. So we now have an official form that will would be used for folks to apply for this funding. I've, I've made some revisions to it at the request of the visioning group that I'll be giving back to them Thursday evening when we meet. Um, so pending that, you know, thumbs up from from that group, that would be the form that we would use and it would go out very similar to an RF, like an RFP or an RFQ process that we do for the city. Um, we would open it, publicize it. Um, it would be in the paper. We'd also put it on social media. Um, and, and I've been fielding calls for this money right along. Um, so I've been doing some outreach work with other, with other groups as well um, that may have an interest in, in applying for funding, whether that's YBCC, um, Stafford. I, I know there's, there's several organizations, the depot, that are that are interested in applying, so it will certainly be wide open to anyone meeting that that nonprofit criteria. I think that that probably is it for my clarifying questions. But I know, like why, like the Yellowstone Bend organization, they've sort of fallen through the cracks, but will have the opportunity to apply. Yep, I met with them this morning. Um, so we have talked through the process and we have a plan to move forward to get them what they need. One other question. Do you think that there's any other organization that I guess, like we're guessing at this point, that would be asking for a larger amount of money that, I guess my only, my only concern is I'm feeling like a little disingenuous that, you know, there were a couple, a few organizations that sort of, you know, were applying for the county, so thought they'd just go ahead and apply for the city when they did it. And, yeah. you know, if we give away this money and it, and it does look like we have quite a considerable amount of money left at mm -hmm. $1.2 million if we allocate all these funds, you know, is, is somebody not going to get the money because these folks got out in front of them? And I just don't, I don't, I'm a little concerned about that look, um, but I, you know, I don't think so. Um, I, I think probably one of the, um, one of the greater risks at this point will be um, to the city not being able to use the funds for infrastructure and, and some of those items, depending on how the remaining money is spent, because, you know, we, we could spend 3 million tomorrow, uh, you know, on infrastructure projects, a new fire truck. I mean, there's all kinds of things that the city uh, always has needs for. And Madam Chair, I guess I'd just say that, um, you know, do, doing money distribution, part of the art of that is is saying no. Uh, so we're going to be saying no. And, and, and that's where I think we've set up a system whereby we can help you think through the priorities and think through, you know, if what organizations are hitting the mark as it relates to the appropriate disbursement of these funds um, versus not and help you sort of slice up, slice the pie as best as you possibly can. But, you know, there's definitely going to be people walking away from this disappointed because there's always more, uh, you know, requests there are than, than there is for the money. And so, you know, we would help you lean into that process and, and think through it and uh, um, help 
uh, you know, make you help make recommendations to you that would make the best decisions that you can with the with the resources that you got. Because it's it's a lot of money on one hand, but it's not a lot on the other. So, yeah. And Mr. Stevens, your committee is is ready to to help look through some of those applications with us. Um, you, you all want to stick out and do that? We we have we have said said that we'd be willing. We just need to be um, authorized and enabled um, to do that by the city. So right now we're kind of idling. So as long as the city formally indicates that they're interested in in us continuing on in some fashion um, and uh, authorizing us, and I, I don't know maybe a new resolution or something, we uh, the committee would be happy to continue um, advise the the city. Thank you. I think that's it for my clarifying questions. Any other questions from the commissioners? All right, do I have a, a motion? And if we're gonna do anything different, it needs to be a bit specific. Um, and then we'll open it up to public comment. I'll make a motion to approve action item um, A. Second. I have a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Um, let's go ahead and open uh, this up to public comments. If you have a comment, please raise your hand, put your name in the chat, come off mute. Patricia Grabo, uh, come off mute, full name and address, please. Uh, Patricia Grabo, actually full name is Patricia Jean Grabo, <laughs> 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston, Montana. Uh, you mentioned these four, can, can the public know what these four are? What are the four? It was never mentioned. It's it's in the agenda packet, um, okay. Patricia, but I'll I'll just read it off quickly. So okay. we have it. Um, it's uh, Aspen uh, for ten thousand dollars, the Park County Community Foundation for twenty five thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars to Live Well forty nine and $102,000 to the Livingston Food Resource Center. Um, the information about why they're asking for those funds is in the packet. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, first of all, I wanna thank the, com the commission for have creating the committee that ha didn't happen before. And, uh, the public is grateful for that. Um, I, I, for example, am, have been president of a nonprofit 501c3 for 15 years. We, the Downtown Building Owner and Business Association, we never heard of this. There's a lot of nonprofits in this town that haven't heard of this. So I really would encourage the commission to, um, to get the information out on, on these uh, grants. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, any other public comment? Mr. Maybe. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, mention a couple of things. Your, your question about uh, and, uh, people being left out uh, because of not knowing. Uh, the the uh, outpouring that's gone to, to the nonprofits like uh, uh, PCCF and uh, with uh, the excellent response to the hoot and uh, and other uh, nonprofits there there is more there are more funds available uh, to to anyone who is not aware of this uh, and I also wanted to thank uh, uh, Tim Stevens uh, for his excellent crafting of how to approach uh, the money distribution, and also to uh, Mrs. Lowy with uh, smoothing out the, uh, the proper way of governmental uh, fashioning of, of what was required. Um, I think that, uh, and I'm going to echo Tim, that the, the response um, has been fantastic. Uh, I know a number of pe people who, who uh, donate directly uh, to different um, nonprofits, and that's um, that's been a terrific response. Thank you.
Thank you, Warren. Warren, will you um, give us your address too? We got your name. We just need your address. Sure. Uh, Warren, maybe 310 South H Street. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any other public comments? Heidi Barrett, please go ahead. Hi, Heidi Barrett. I live at 231 South H Street in Livingston. Um, I just wanted to, um, I'm also the director at Aspen, and I just wanted to thank the um, city commission and um, uh, Tim and his group for the opportunity for this funding. Um, I applied, as Lisa will tell you, uh, last November. I was like the nervous Nelly and got mine in right away um, to the county and the city. And it actually was, I just wanted to let people know that the county did encourage us to apply also to the city, um, especially if the services we were providing were both citywide and countywide. So that's the reason. And the, the county did um, approve our portion of our grant proposal. And so this would be the city's portion of the same grant proposal. So I just really appreciate the extra funding um, and the collaboration between the city and the county. So thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, Amy, you go ahead. Gavin, you'll be next. Sure. Amy Titkemeyer Stevens, 315 North 3rd Street, Livingston. Um, I just want to reiterate what Heidi already said that um, we were encouraged at the Livingston Food Resource Center to apply for funds um, regarding the mental health counseling program that we provide at the Livingston Food Resource Center. So along with Executive Director George Pierce and myself, we went ahead and did that, had some conversations with Lisa and um, really grateful for this committee and for the commission to offer this money to the nonprofits. I know for my program, for the program um, in regards to mental health, we wouldn't be able to continue past this year if we didn't have grant funding for it. And presently I'm serving 27 patients um, and clients. And it's, I think, a wonderful program for people to be able to receive mental health um, on a free basis. So thank you very much for considering it. Thank you, Amy. Gavin. Uh, thank you, everybody. I just wanted to, to take a quick moment to thank you for your recognition of uh, Park Counties and, and Livingston's nonprofit sector. Um, I saw firsthand during COVID uh, the impacts on those organizations and uh, the great work that they were able to do to, to support our residents um, stepping up in ways we, we can't even imagine. Um, <clears throat> likewise, over the last two months, we've seen the same thing happen again uh, with the recent flooding. Um, so just the discussion and the recognition of, of, of our nonprofits is, is incredible and, and humbling and heartwarming. So thank you. Um, and then I just wanted to note, uh, assuming um, this, uh, this grant is, is successful and, and, and granted, um, uh, most nonprofits in Park County will actually be able to receive some of this money through the through the Give a Hoot campaign, assuming they participate. Um, so it's an equitable uh, distribution of these funds across Park Counties and Livingston's uh, nonprofit sector. And I say Park County because some of these nonprofits um, are not just in, in the city, uh, but um, I can assure you that most of our nonprofits serve both the city and the county simultaneously. Um, so thank you. And, and I appreciate the work of the, of the commission and, and of the committee. Uh, through Tim, thank you. Gavin, can we get your address, please, too? Yes, I was gonna say that, I thought about that. Uh, 215 South C Street, Livingston, Montana. Thank you. Any further public comments? Ms. Lau, do you have a public comment? I do, I would just like to um, recognize Faith as well. Um, for the incredible work she has done with this committee, last minute Zoom meetings, uh, just from coordinating, organizing, keeping us on track, keeping me knowing where I'm supposed to be at any given moment. Um, so just a huge shout out to Faith for all of her work with this committee and, and everything she does for us. Thank you for the, for the moment to give that shout out. Thank you. Any other public comment? I'm looking one last time. I don't see any hands up. If I'm missing you, please come off mute. Seeing no more public comments, I will, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public comment period. Commissioners, discussion, deliberation.
Uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, I'm just going to make a comment. Um, thank you to um, my fellow members on this board, um, especially Tim for being our chair and having the background and expertise in this um, um, this kind of work. Um, it's greatly appreciated and uh, and uh, runs a very efficient meeting. <laughs> As you can well tell, we've uh, gotten a lot done in a very short period of time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Lyons, did I see you before that one in my comment or question? Yeah, thanks. And so um, I, I really do appreciate the work of, of the committee and I'm, I'm confident in, in their assessments. And it sounds like this is, the work isn't going to be done after um, we decide what to do with the recommendations. And so, um, you know, and if, if we were to vote to approve the recommendations, um, what, what do the next steps look like? And um, can, we, can we give them a break before we uh, ask for their help again? Just kind of curious what that what that's going to look like. There, there would be sort of an inherent automatic break um, during the time that we are collecting applications. So we'll put out kind of that, that request for a grant application process and, and give about 30 days for folks to, to get that stuff together and get it to us. And then we would convene again to, to see, take a look at what we have. So I guess uh, Commissioner Schwartz mentioned an efficient meeting run by Mr. Stevens. Um, and I remember seeing their applications to this committee uh, a few months ago, and I would hate to require them to submit applications again to be part of this committee again, if we get to the point of asking for their help and deciding on uh, who to award funds to from the request for proposals. So I just um, want to just put it out there that if we can avoid requiring like the reestablishment of a new committee um, and the paperwork that that entails. Um, I, I'm pretty confident in the work that they've done thus far. And then seeing at the end of their report that they're, that they're volunteering additional help, uh, I would just, would, would be grateful if we could figure out a way to avoid um, requiring the reestablishment of the committee. Mr. Lyons, I believe that we can just extend the time in which this committee is, is together. Um, I think that they were given 90 days um, and like we did with the, the strategic plan ad hoc committee last meeting, we that, that committee asked for an extension and we granted it. So I believe that we would be able to do that. If, if that's would, would, that, would that just require a motion this evening and a vote, an additional vote? I we would need we would need to nope. oh yeah we would need to notice it um but that certainly could be something we could put on if we, we can wanted. put it on the next agenda put it on the next agenda yeah okay uh can mark that as a a vote to putting that on the next agenda um but yeah this this looks great and uh Mr. Stevens I I certainly appreciate the fact that my uh volunteer work on the commission after my uh, after my day job is a little bit different from my day job. Um, and so uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't envy the fact that it seems like what you're doing here is pretty similar to what you're, you do for your day job, but we really appreciate your expertise and effort uh, on the committee. So thank you. All right, I, I have a couple of comments and actually one last question as well, uh, Lisa, in these recommendations, number three um, talks about requesting an opinion from the city attorney um, about potential leftover funds. Um, do we have the answer to that question? Is that something we need to look at later? Um, it sounds like maybe from Mr. Stevens that we got that answer. Um, regarding the flood 
flood relief piece. Yeah. Um, they, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword right now. They have said that you can use ARPA funds for um, some types of flood relief, but they have also said that you cannot double dip with other federal funding sources. So if someone's getting FEMA relief or an SBA loan or, or some of those other programs that are immediately available to them that are coming um, directly from federal funding or through federal pass-through funding, um, you cannot use it for that. So folks, folks can't double dip. And administratively, that's going to be tough to kind of tease out. Um, and that's something that we'll, we'll work towards if that's a direction um, that the commission would like to go. But I, I can certainly provide you more information about that. It, it's sort of a, a moving target with, um, with the flood having really just, just occurred and, and FEMA and SBA starting to pull out um, their, their resources and their, um, their availability for people to just drop in. Um, those drop-in centers are starting to close. So um, that's kind of an evolving issue at the moment. Okay. And, and, Matt, and Madam Chair, if I, if I may, um, you know, just to add to that, if there are funds left over that you might consider to put into flood relief, um, PCCF has set up a, a, a fund uh, in cooperation with United Way, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the advisory committee for that too, but um, the um, United Way has done a really, really good job of vetting, um, vetting the requests for, um, for money uh, so that there is no double dipping. Um, and, and so if, if, for example, there were, there was a balance of funds that the city wanted to put into, you know, flood relief, and they were to give that money to the, to this fund, that money you'd be confident would be vetted by this like big team of people over in Bozeman, who's doing that to make sure that there's nobody trying to like slip through with something sneaky. So just, just as, as a, uh, you know, point for thought for future. Yeah. And just, Deliberating with my fellow commissioners and Ms. Lau, if you want to respond to this, I just want to make sure that with us saying we're, we're accepting the recommendations of this committee, we're not sort of forced into giving us the flood relief if this is where we're, we can make a decision later yeah. on down the road. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I thought mm -hmm. this kind of struck out to me, stuck out to me for a moment. So just wanted to make sure we weren't sort of pigeonholed at that point. Um, Okay. I think that all of these organizations do great work for our community. And I completely agree that we have an incredible nonprofit uh, community um, here in our city and that they do incredible things for our community and a lot of things that our city is not able to do. Um, and I appreciate them tremendously. Um, I will even admit that I work full time for a nonprofit, so um, I'm part of that community and proud to be. Um, I'm just going to say it one more time because I'm just feeling a little uneasy about it is that we didn't have this official round one. And I just want this to be super equitable and feel like nobody got left out. Um, so I'm a little hung up there and I'm, I'm just being honest. Um, so I feel like I just, I need, I need to say that. I don't know if any of my other commissioners um, have any thoughts to, to push me one way or the other, but um, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. And Commissioner Lyons, I'm gonna come, come right to you, but I will say that I am so pleased and thankful for the work that this committee has done, but that gives me a little, that's the one thing that gives me a little heartburn. So Commissioner Lyons. Uh, I think, I think that's a, a valid point and I would, be with you if there weren't the vast majority of the funds still remaining after we make this decision. So, and and hearing from from Mrs. Barrett too about the fact that she was applying for these funds back in November. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any equity issue in rewarding that level of of awareness of of what's available to. Um, nonprofits when it's available. So it, it, I think it's fair for those who have, have um, made the effort already to be rewarded, especially given the fact that there's the vast majority of the funds will not be accounted for after making that decision. So um, I, I, think, I think that's a reasonable concern, Chair Kale, and, I, and I would, um, it would be more salient to me if we were speaking for a huge proportion of the funds that are available, but we're not. 
And so I think that um, we, we can still honor the, the efforts of those who have, have come forward already and still have plenty um, for people who weren't aware for whatever reason to come forward in the next round. Thank you for uh, the time. I yield. Commissioner Freeman, Commissioner Schwartz, any other thoughts? Okay, hearing none, roll call please. Chair Kale? Four. Commissioner Freeman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. Motion passes. Uh, and thank you to, to that committee and be prepared. We're coming back for you. We want you to, to, to work again. So we'll, we'll be adding that to an agenda, hopefully. Um, I'm going to ask that we take our break, take a five minute break, um, and then we will come back. Oh, 10 minutes. That's right. I'm sorry. 10 minute break. Um, sorry that it got extended past our time and 10 minutes. We'll be back to finish the meeting. Thank you all. Okay, it looks like we have all our commissioners back. Um, Mrs. Lowey, all our staff ready to go ahead? Looks like we are, yep. Okay, great. Well, let's move right along. Uh, moving on to action item B, discuss, approve, deny, providing $1,200 financial contribution to the Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you. This is this is something that was in progress um, just prior to Mr. Cardew's passing away. Um, I, I met with Bill Berg uh, about it on um, the the initial inquiry came into the city in May of 2022. So um, pretty, pretty close on to to when things became a um, little different than they were before. So um, this is a um, rail authority that is advocating to bring passenger rail service um, back through Montana. Um, it will create jobs. It's projected to generate close to 271 million um, in benefits each year. There is a um, the last page of our packet is a is a flyer that gives some of this detail. It also will provide um, you know, reliable um, transportation for folks, um, both for uh, healthcare, education, commerce, any, any of those items where folks need to get from one place to another. Um, Commissioner Berg, you know, mentioned just, just really being able to get to Helena in the winter when the legislative session is going, when, when we have snow events and wind events and that makes travel somewhat difficult. Um, the, the sense is that um, Livingston being listed on, on the letterhead as a supporting member and, um, and an advocate for this program will lead more credence to making this actually happen and bringing back passenger rail service to our, to our sector of the community. The annual contribution is $1,200 a year. Um, I don't, don't think that that is um, an overwhelming amount for the possible benefit that this program would bring to our community overall. So with that, I would certainly entertain any questions and um, the administration is seeking to um, have us join this and, and commit the $1,200 in funds to uh, the Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Lyon? Um, what, it, what do the funds or what, so what does our contribution go towards funding? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going towards actually funding the infrastructure or the administration of the, of the, the rail, the passenger rail itself. Um, so I'm just a little bit curious of like where that money goes. Mm -hmm. 
It would provide support both for, um, I believe they have a minimal staffing person to handle inquiries and, and organize meetings, as well as fund some of the overall economic return research that gets done to continue advocating to bring this program back. You know, estimates of, of what is the financial contribution? What is the return on that investment? What can communities expect to see back? How many passengers would they look to see in a, in a given time frame? So all of that research does have a price tag to it and this, this helps support that. Thank you. And do you have do you have a sense of peer communities that are contributing to the effort? Um, yep, I do. Actually, I have a, a list. There are several um, counties that contribute. Park County, as well, um, being one of them. Um, having having Livingston on that piece, uh, you know, being the hub, being one of the places where BNSF and, and rail was so important to our community for so, so long, speaks a lot to it. Uh, Missoula is a member. And let me look and see if I have the other communities. I believe Helena is as well. Um, mostly what I have in front of me right now is county. So it's showing Carbon View, Silver Bow, Broadwater, um, Mineral County, Missoula, Park, Powell, Prairie, um, basically anyone that's along this corridor. Okay. Um, yeah, th those questions shouldn't be um, construed as a oh, no. uh, as as not me, me not being in support. I understand made my career in in the economic benefits of transportation, so I'm pretty aware of them. Um, but I just, you know, I just saw this $1,200 and it was, there wasn't really an explanation of where it was going. So I wanted to, to certainly do, do my due diligence as the um, representative of taxpayers. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Uh, any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Schwartz, Commissioner Friedman? I think Commissioner Lyons answered my questions. I know uh, Commissioner Berg from the county is on this board, I believe. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Um, and uh, so that's great. We'd have, and, and we are not required to have a represent, no. representative on the board or just becoming a member. No. Perfect. No time commitment. Right. All right. Additional Thank time you. commitment, I should say. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that has it for my questions. Um, do I have a motion and then we can open it up to public comment. I'll make a motion to approve providing $1,200 of financial contribution to Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. I'll second action item B. I have a motion by Lyons and a second by Schwartz. Now we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, Patricia Grabo, I see you have your hand up. Come on off mute. Yes, this is this is a passion. Uh, it's been the last 15 years that we have worked towards rail passenger service coming back to Livingston. And along it would come from Spokane to Billings to Fargo. Um, just to give you a quick background on this, um, we lobbied in, in the state legislature 700 people signed a petition from Livingston alone to get rail passenger service going again. They passed it, but it was useless the way that the legislature um, acted. So my uh, good friend, Dave Strohmeyer and I, about a committee of about four of us, uh, worked hard in this area. And then Dave discovered that if the, the county commissioners have the authority to get rail passenger service going. So the reason that there are counties along the way is those are counties who have committed to getting this, this service going. And it is, it is likely, it is possible. It is not only, um, it not only is a real boon for climate change in terms of the kind of energy that is used for transportation, but it also underscores Livingston's role as the first, the first community that that for the first national park in the world, 
we are unique as far as the world is concerned. Well, passenger service would bring in passengers from Glacier again to Yellowstone by rail. And Bill Berg has stepped up and he's secretary of this group. The money goes to lobbying for this, this effort. Um, it would, it would, I, that we would help save the downtown we will lose unless we act because it will bring a significant amount of money into downtown Livingston um, since the, the rail would, the train would come to our beautiful depot center. Um, it is a remarkable effort uh, across the state to have this uh, return the rail passenger service to return to Southwestern Montana. And I can't tell you how excited all of us are after 15 years of hard work to have this actually come into being. Uh, Downtown Building Owner and Business Association has led the charge here in Livingston. So the $1,200 is just token money. And the endorsement of the city of Livingston would be uh, both symbolic and, and effective in terms of encouraging other communities, other cities to join this effort. Um, it's, it's a wonderful idea. And, and as I say, it's much closer than you think uh, to coming into fruition. Um, I, I just uh, think about being able to, people from Europe and other places that are used to trains, being able to actually come to Yellowstone through Livingston again by rail passenger. And it's, uh, it's a pretty wonderful idea for our downtown economic survival. Thank you. Sorry, my screen's jumping. Thank you, Patricia. Um, any other public comment? I'm not seeing any public comment. So we'll close public comment. Commissioners, discussion. Any discussion? Mr. Lyon? Um, rail, passenger rail in our community and in our region would be fantastic. Um, I, I think uh, I, I laud the efforts of Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority and I wish them continued success. And I think that, um, I actually think that Patricia put it well by saying that it's, you know, it's a symbolic endorsement of that effort as much as it's a financial endorsement. So, um, and anyone who's aware of the, the history of our city is aware that, you know, it's that, that passenger rail system that um, is why we exist. Um, and it's why we have the, the beautiful downtown and character of our community that we do. So um, I think this would be a great, great gesture and I, I strongly support it. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Other commissioners? Madam Chair. Commissioner Schwartz. Yeah, I just um, like to add it uh, um, can't happen soon enough, as far as I'm concerned. So, full speed ahead. Um, it's long overdue, and uh, I'd like to see it happen. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. It would be incredible to get passenger rail back through Livingston. Um, and I'm, I'm excited that we can help uh, support this, uh, this project. Uh, with that, roll call, please. Chair Kahl. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. All right, uh, action item C. Discuss, approve, deny consideration of option of, for city manager to address housing concerns and other potential compensation. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you. This was a, a request to 
um, kind of reframe and discuss the items that Greg Proffman and Ted Barkley were kind enough to bring to us earlier this evening, um, both around um, a variety of different compensation models that could, you could use as well as um, housing allowances. I know um, the city of Bozeman is doing a pretty significant housing allowance for their city manager. Obviously their costs are much higher than ours as well. So everything's you know, proportionate, not advocating one way or another that we do a housing allowance or do other various fringes. But I think it's a, a good topic to discuss understanding how tight this hiring market may be and that we are not necessarily as competitive as we could be in terms of salary. So um, this will kind of frame um, item number D, which is where we'll get into a discussion about um, continuing the current requirement and ordinance that the city manager reside within the city limits. So, um, so this first one is more about um, kind of that variety of compensation and fringe benefits we could offer to make it more attractive. Um, and the next item is about the housing requirement, residency requirement. So with that, I'll turn it back to you all for discussion, thoughts, ideas. Deal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Lisa, do you have any recommendations of what I mean, you, you talked about, you know, a housing allotment a, allowance. Um, are there other are there other things that other cities are doing to kind of make their compensation? Mm -hmm. They are, um, some cities are providing enhanced um, stipends and payments towards health insurance, which is a big cost, especially if you're doing a family coverage. Um, some are doing you know, housing allowances pretty much across the board for employees, including the city manager. Um, some are doing additional days off, additional personal days, understanding that, you know, the city manager role is, is somewhat unique in that there are, it's not nine to five, um, hardly ever. Um, but anyway, um, so providing those additional, um, we call them administrative days here at the city of Livingston. So, I believe Mr. Carter had negotiated for three extra days when um, during one of his um, you know, compensation discussions. So there is that model of additional time off. There is um, kind of enhanced stipend towards health insurance. There's a city vehicle option that, that some cities pursue. Um, some provide a cell phone stipend. So a city manager wouldn't necessarily be carrying a city phone and a personal phone. Um, that really comes down to personal preference. Um, there are certainly um, additional travel allowances, vehicle allowances, if you're not going to provide a vehicle. Um, so there's, there's certainly things, um, enhanced contribution towards retirement or an IRA, that would certainly be another option that I've seen frequently used. Um, so there's, there's a number of options. Some of this will come down to what happens in a contract negotiation with who, whoever the finalist is. And, and they may bring kind of their own ideas of what um, they would find acceptable for compensation for a role such as this. Thank you. Other commissioners, questions, thoughts? Commissioner Lyon? So I, I saw that the the posting went out. So what we're talking about is being in being prepared for this, the negotiation stage of the hiring process. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and do we need to, does the commission need to come to consensus on exactly what will be on the table at that point or or is this is this discussion really for us to be made aware that those things might come up and that that that's going to eventually down the line change the annual cost of the city manager? I, what I would hope to for the commission to gain or to take away from this is that the we may have to get creative around um, getting to yes with um, whoever the, the finalist is, whether that's a relocation package, if, if it's someone that isn't local, 
um, or, or any of the other things I, I mentioned before. Um, I don't know in this hiring market that um, our base salary is going to be competitive enough to get the caliber of applicant that, that we're all looking for um, without necessarily getting creative on the other side on, in terms of compensation fringes and, and things of that nature. Is there, is there an advantage to spending the money in benefits as opposed to salary? Um, yes. It, it all comes like it's all it all comes out of the same budget, right? And it's it all eventually it's all the same bottom line. Well, yes and no, because some benefits require a match either through FICA or or other payroll taxes that the city pays. Some benefits do not. So it really is going to depend if you're giving additional time off. It's additional time off, but we're not matching anything in terms of retirement or, or, or FICA or any of the um, payroll taxes to, to get those additional benefits. Um, our, the, the, the advertised salary is set in stone at this point, as I understand it, given the fact that the posting is out, right? It, that is the advertised salary range, yes. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Others? Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, I'll just chime in. I, you know, echoing uh, Commissioner Lyons, I think we're just, these are things that we need to um, have in the back of our mind because we, um, it, it may come to us that we have to come up with um, some creative um, solutions to be able to hire the right person, um, you know, besides just, you know, the salary that we're offering. So um, I appreciate it being brought to our attention. Um, we had a um, somewhat similar situation seven years ago during the hire for, of Michael Cardus and, uh, um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Commissioner Friedman, anything? I appreciate uh, Greg and Ted coming and talking to us this evening, and Lisa, uh, you giving us some of these options to think about, some of these ideas that we might need to use to, to be creative. Um, and I think it's great that we start to consider that and think about that now. Um, I am not seeing that we need to have a motion um, this evening for anything, um, unless one of my fellow commissioners jumps in and says something, but I feel like we're just having this discussion um, to put some stuff on the table to think about and then potentially personally maybe ask questions or do some research about knowing that we might bump up against this um, mm -hmm. in the coming weeks and months. All right, I'm gonna ask one more time of our, my fellow commissioners, any further discussion around this? Otherwise, because this is just a discussion, we haven't made a motion, I'm, I won't open it up to public comment. We'll move on to the next agenda item. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you, commissioners, for that discussion. I'm gonna move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is discuss, approve, deny city manager residency requirement. Mrs. Lowey. Thank you. This um, currently under ordinance, the city manager, the permanent city manager is required to live within the city limits of Livingston. Thus they are rate payers within the city and they're impacted by the decisions that they make personally in terms of rate increases and, and things of that nature. Um, this became um, kind of a, a hot button issue in our in our last recruitment uh, about six years ago, um, and you know it was we had an applicant who already owned property um, about ten miles outside of town, uh, down in the valley, and so we discussed this ordinance 
in terms of what did that do for us globally if we were going to look at ways to increase an applicant pool, maybe address some of some of the housing concerns that there are directly in the city limits. And right now we don't have a lot of inventory available either, um, as well as the price point being as high as it is, although it is it's moderating um, a little bit as we speak. Um, ultimately, that commission decided to leave the city ordinance as is. Um, to require that the city manager, permanent city manager, live within the city limits. So um, we've been asked to kind of bring this back for consideration, understanding that um, we may not have um, kind of the, the buying power or hiring power, if you will, um, for the city manager role that we had even six years ago. Um, so it is something for the commission to consider. I, I would suggest um, that, that the commission come to some sort of a consensus um, because this may affect applicants in the pool who are looking at it and going, you know, and hitting realtor.com maybe and saying, well, I, I want to have a ranch at, I want to have a couple of horses on my property and I can't do that in the city and, and things like that. And, and it, it may affect, and you don't know, it's all hypothetical, but it may impact um, the pool that we draw of applicants. So, um, and I'm not advocating one way or another, this is strictly um, a commission decision in terms of what you decide to do with this particular ordinance. So on, on this particular issue, um, I, I do not have a recommendation for the commission, I, I believe also serving as the interim manager, interim city manager and, and living outside of town, it would be um, inappropriate for me to make such a recommendation to the commission, given how it's my current situation. So with that, I will, I will turn it over to you all to consider whether or not our next city manager has to live in the city limits. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lowey. Uh, let's start with Clarify, maybe some clarifying questions if commissioners have questions. Commissioner Line. We're, we, we're not making a decision on an ordinance tonight. We're making a decision on if we want to do anything about an ordinance tonight. Correct. Correct. It would be the decision would be for us to bring back an ordinance based on whether or not it you know you just you all decide to do you know in in what we call affectionately call the donut zone the five mile radius around the city or if it's no you've got to stay in the city then there is no change um to the current ordinance or if it's you know you can live you know our emergency responders are generally required to live within a 20 minute response zone um to to their individual stations um, we've even had to relax some of that in, in recent years for uh, folks to get housing. So you may want to do something like that where you have to live within 20 miles of the city or again, come back to you're just staying with the ordinance as is. Okay, thanks. Um, I have thoughts, but uh, I'll save thoughts for later. Thank you, Commissioner Lyon. Other questions? So I, I have a question following up what Commissioner Lyons said. So tonight, potentially, we can make a motion to put an ordinance on an agenda to change the residency requirement. That would be what we would do tonight. Right. Um, if we decided to do that and put it to a vote, how many, how many times would it appear need to appear on a, an agenda twice. Okay. With a public hearing. With a public hearing. And then it would be effective, Courtney, 30 days after the second, after the public hearing and the second appearance. If you were to change it. Or tonight we can decide to just have a discussion and not do anything. You could do that as well. Why we're at the discuss up here tonight. Um, further questions? Otherwise, I think we need to discuss a little bit before we 
decide in what direction we're heading this evening. Madam Chair, are you opening for discussion or? Let's open, yeah, let's open for discussion because I feel like we're not in a place to make a motion. Um, so go ahead, Commissioner Schwartz, if you would like to discuss. Okay. Um, um, I will admit that I was one that questioned the residency requirement seven years ago and uh, brought up the idea that uh, we need to um, be flexible. Um, my desire is to have city commission, I mean, city manager live within city limits, but due to um, the inventory that we have, obviously, um, and stuff like that, and the costs have gone, you know, way up, and not just in the city, but it's going to be in county too. But I think we need to look at some options like a uh, um, like a donut area, like a, a 10 mile radius or something like that. Um, um, I think we need to be flexible on this. Um, that's where I stand um, with it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, we do have, you know, definitely a lack of housing and lack of um, lack of options at this at this time. So, um, Madam Chair, with that, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Others? Commissioner Lyon. Um, I, I appreciate the, the need to be flexible. Um, I also appreciate the intention of the ordinance in the first place of, um, you know, requiring that the city manager who has a lot of um, a lot of power when it comes to executing um, the strategy of the city in response to the policies of the, the commission um, has a lot of power to affect things that affect the prices that people pay in fees in living in the city. So I, I, I think that that is an interesting and um, compelling uh, requirement. As it relates to affordable housing, I don't think, I think the median house home price in Livingston right now, while I, I do agree that there is a limited inventory, the median home price would still be within the reach of a household making the, the um, salary that, that we've advertised. Um, if that weren't the case, then I, I, would, I would be a lot more um, likely to support removing that requirement. But I, I, the, the math that I've done quickly on the back of the napkin, it looks like the city manager would be able to afford a median home in Livingston as it stands. And so, you know, you take that example in Bozeman um, where they, they give like a 30 mile radius of the city limits in Bozeman, but the median home price in Bozeman is very different than it is in Livingston. Livingston has, has made some, some ground on Bozeman in the, in the time that I've lived here, but it still is not the same market. Um, that being said, I don't, I don't necessarily feel strongly about it one way or another. Um, but as, as such, I, I tend to lean towards the existing policy. Um, and that's all I have to say for now. And I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Um, I, Hold on. I, I you're off. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Commissioner, go ahead, Commissioner Friedman, and then I'll go. Go ahead. I just happen to be sitting here. I don't know where all this goes. Uh, I joined the commission, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. <clears throat> we were in the city county building. We met with this, the county uh, on a regular basis. So I'm surrounded by people that work for the county, and every one of them lived in the city. And I don't know where I go with this, but I mean, it's, it's you know, just think about the way we're set up here. When you think of uh, Livingston and, and and the county, it's just you know, to me it's like a 
pretty darn close in one big family. Yeah. So uh, I don't know where all that goes, but I mean, it is really ironic the way things work out here. So we got a lot of county guys. You can be a county commissioner, and uh, most of them live in the city, and vice versa. And we got the same thing with the city. So I think it's always uh, it's it's a tough one. I don't I don't know how you how you come to a conclusion on it. Are you? Thank you, Commissioner Friedman. Um, I. I really appreciate that. I would really like to see the city manager live in the city. You know, certainly the city has more taxes than the folks in the county do. They, you know, we pay both city and county taxes and we assess those to the folks that live in the city. We obviously have utilities that, that we pay as city residents that our county counterparts do not. Um, and it seems important that that person who's helping to make those decisions or guide the city in that direction would live, live within those regulations um, as well. I also want to make sure that we have the opportunity to attract or hire a great candidate for a city manager, because I think that's incredibly important. Um, I would like to sweeten the pot um, if we need to in other ways first, before we look at changing the residency requirement. That's kind of my my feeling. You know, are there are there other ways that we can be creative? Um, if that person is having an issue finding a home immediately, can we say, well, you can live outside the city for six months until you say to live in the city, and then maybe look at that regulation again. If we had to do that. I know that's a little precarious potentially for the person moving here, um, but I would prefer to make it better for that person to, to take the job in, in other ways. Um, I know, uh, Quentin, I went back and, and, and Mel, I, I went back and looked at the meeting from, I think it was 2016, um, where you all discussed this uh, before. And it sounded like to me, and maybe you can let me know that perhaps you'd ask the newspaper to do a poll about what, what, the, citizens what the citizens thought about the residency requirement of the, the city manager and it sounded like it came back pretty strongly that folks wanted that the city manager to live in town um granted that was 2016 and this is now um so those are just some of my my thoughts um and and considerations i for me it feels like this is like last ditch effort to get someone um and that we could try other ways to attract that person um and honestly if our the posting is out, and if we are going to close the posting in a couple of weeks, at this point, us moving forward with the residency requirement is not going to change who's applying this, this first go round. Um, I'm hoping that we can do it in one go round, but um, I, you know, I, I don't know that that's going to change the pool that we're going to see this first time. Uh, those are my thoughts. Others? Madam Chair. Commissioner Schwartz. Um, uh, just to, to add, I um, remember um, our city manager, Michael, uh, um, did have a hard time finding a place and eventually did. Um, fortunately for us, uh, I just, just to reiterate, um, we're hiring a city manager. It's not elected official. Um, obviously, you know, city commissioners should be <laughs> have to live in the city and stuff like that. So just want to keep in mind, we're looking, you know, at a manager. Believe me, um, my first preference, absolutely. Um, I want them, want them to live in town, but I just we really, really need to be ready to be flexible and that I guess that's all I'm trying to bring attention to and that's what I did the last time um and I will say um overwhelmingly people were totally against uh having a city manager outside of um city limits back in uh, 2016 when I brought it up but um that being said I'm not afraid to bring it up again it's just an option that we need to look at <laughs> thank you Madam Chair I yield thank you Commissioner Schwartz 
Others? Commissioner Lang. Uh, I, I appreciate what Commissioner Schwartz was saying about being ready to be flexible. Um, I think that I feel ready to be flexible without thinking that that's not necessarily a priority in our strategy for acquiring a city manager at the moment. Um, so like if it comes to that, I, um, and <laughs> Commissioner Schwartz, if you want to spearhead the, the effort to, <laughs> to determine if that's something that citizens want, <laughs> um, more power to you. Uh, but I think that um, I agree with Chair Kale that um, there are probably more effective ways to 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 use your words sweeten the pot than than the um, than the residency requirement. In fact, I, um, if I'm if I were looking at a job in a city, I think my first thought it would be what is what's it what's that city like right not what's the outlying 30 miles like or or so forth so anyway i i think that um i am open to it if if it comes to that um but i don't necessarily feel compelled that that is what we have to do right now in order to to broaden the net i think there are probably more effective ways at the moment um but again uh I, I am I am open to it if it comes to it. And I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Anyone else? Okay, so we're we're at a crossroad at this point. This is again as a discuss approved deny. Do we do we want to keep this as a discussion tonight? Or is there some sort of motion? I'm comfortable leaving a discussion and letting discussion letting it go. Um, okay. Thank you. I'm just glad that we brought it up that something needs to be brought to our attention. Thank you. Wonderful. Commissioner Lyons, I suspect from your comments, you're good to allow this as a discussion this evening. Commissioner Schwartz, or excuse, excuse me, Commissioner Friedman, you're good to just leave that a discussion this evening? I got the thumbs up. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Um, okay, so this is just a discussion, so we won't open this up to public comment if we do decide to bring this back and it um, becomes an ordinance, an option for an ordinance, we will have public participation around that, absolutely. Um, so we are going to go ahead and move, move on um, to our closed executive session for a personnel matter and a legal update. Um, and so folks, we will um, go to a separate room or actually we probably send you to a separate room in the Zoom room um, and we'll have a closed session and then we will come back um, after, after that closed session. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Mrs. Ms. Llewellyn, please. Chair Kale, um, because it is 816, and we may run past the three hour mark, I would ask that you go ahead and extend the meeting now um, uh, while you're in the public part of the meeting. And then we can take about a five minute break uh, or just a couple of minutes. And I think Ms. Lowey and I are gonna try to go join Commissioner Schwartz and Commissioner Friedman in, in the room there. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Can I have a motion to extend? Make a motion to extend the meeting. Second. Second. I have a motion by Schwartz, a second by Friedman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. So let's do this. Take we're gonna five. we're gonna move our our public to another room. We'll take a five minute break to get situated, and then come back and be in the closed session.
we will wait uh, to make sure that Commissioner Lyons is back. Let him turn on his video. Um, great. All right, so we're coming back um, out of closed session and back into our regular open public meeting. And we will continue on with our agenda. We are at city manager comments, Mrs. Lowey. Thank you. Just wanted to give a, a couple of quick updates. Um, both FEMA and SBA are ending um, here fairly soon. They're starting to put out publicly. They've already shut down Cook City and Gardner for their um, disaster information stations. They're going to be shutting down um, Livingston as well um, fairly soon. So anyone that needs um, to contact them, please do it as soon as humanly possible. Um, we will get further information out sharing on our web page and social media now that we have um, some more infographics and, and stuff to share with, um, with the public. There is also um, on 820, which unfortunately it's, it's coming pretty quick to us, a, a river cleanup initiative that is gonna be happening. Um, so we will not have time to get it on the next agenda to review. So we have um, in the interest of um, the community um, waived fees for that um, administratively, both for the rental of the band shell. Um, we're still determining trash fees because we don't know what volume of stuff is is going to be back, but I would expect that we will do a waiver of those fees um, administratively as well. So I wanted to share that with you all, so you knew that that was happening on eight twenty. Um, and that is all of my updates under city manager comments. Given that it is already nine o'clock, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lowy. Um, Commissioner, so we're rolling into commissioner comments, and Commissioner Lyons, you're up. Uh, nothing for me except thanks, Chair Kale, for uh, doing another good job running running the meeting for us. Uh, great work, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Commissioner Schwartz. I echo that sentiment as well. I, I really have nothing else to add. Um, but um, thank you, um, Chair Kale, for running the meeting. Uh, superb job as usual. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Friedman. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, in, in my commissioner comments, I am going to, I don't know if it's appropriate, give a second to uh, Commissioner Lyon's thoughts of adding to the agenda, the extension of the uh, ARPA committee, if we can get that on the next agenda so that we could, can do that. I, I'm going to make that motion. Do I have a second um, just so we can do that this evening? Second. Thanks for remembering. Great. Um, so let's go ahead and get that on there. So we're we're ahead of the curve on that. Um, thank you, Lisa, for mentioning that river cleanup. Um, and uh, I appreciate you, you taking control of that and, and getting stuff done so that we can help clean up our river um, and, and, and get that done. It's, it's so important to our community of Livingston and the county as a whole um, and, and quite important to our economic recovery. So thank you for, for doing that. Um, I think that that's all I have this evening as well. Thank you all for a good meeting and great conversation and discussion. I so appreciate that every, every meeting that we have. Um, thank you to the staff for all that you do for us. We appreciate you tremendously. Um, and with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Oh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I beat him to it. He did. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage him. I'll second. All right. I have a motion by lines in a second. By Schwartz. Thank you all so much. I am going to adjourn this meeting of the Livingston City Commission on August 9th at 9.03 p.m. Uh, have a great evening all and, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you again.